What up, y'all? Today, I wanted to talk to you about uh, after discard, what it's like, or what do you what do you do, what do you not do? Okay, so after you've been with a narcissist for a long period of time, and you have been discarded, you've you've had nothing left to give, um, and they have uh, discarded you. Uh, disengage from you or you have disc discarded them um, because you have nothing else to give and you're just broke down to pieces. Uh, a lot of times the narcissist um, they they take things to so always take things too far where they they break you down and then they think that they can always just um, you know, treat treat you terrible, and then come back and rehoover you. Um, but what you'll find, especially if you've been in several cycles with a narcissist, is that they truly and utterly don't care. Um, that that lack of empathy, um, that lack of understanding, that lack of love, um, that selfishness that they have. It is uh, the most destructive thing um, in in humanity uh, that it will devastate you and it will bring you all the way down to your core. You will feel destroyed. And you have to really be in a bad spot um, because of how, how much they have devalued you. They have um, actively devalued you at time of um, discard. And a lot of times, if you've been with them just for a few months even, it could take a long time to get over them and to get back to where, who you were. Um, but if, if you've spent like several years or even a decade or so with them, um, it's, 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 it's so destructive. It could take a long, long time. Um, but you got to, uh, after discard, you, you, you have to give them nothing, nothing that that's your whole answer to discard is give them nothing. And you have to find a way to focus on yourself. Um, and to not ruminate um, and not to spend any time thinking about them. And what, what you'll find though is uh, you will, as much and as hard as it is, you will recover and you will not be thinking about them. Uh, typically in a six, six month period, you have no, no contact that you will feel uh, significantly better uh, in, in your situation and, and, and how you feel in your recovery. Um, because at, at the time of discard, you'll find that it is a blessing in disguise. It is um, the best thing that could have ever happened to you because uh, a lot of times it will it will make you feel rejuvenated in, in to some degree to where uh, that you will be working on the new man, the new woman, the new individual, the new you, okay? And when you have put up with garbage and being devalued and destroyed, see, humanity is, is not meant to be like that, not meant to live like that, not meant to be devalued every day and 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 to have to deal with that is is just pure mental psychological um and and, and it's it's even physically abuse uh, you, you feel physically abused even if you weren't physically abused um because they make you hate yourself they make you um not love yourself and to always put them first and and that's just one thing if you care about somebody but 
what I've learned in life is that you can never put somebody first. Um, and a lot of people talk about that in life, you know, put the one you love first. Yeah, and that's fine and all, but I, I don't believe that that's, that's the way we should live. We should always put ourselves first, um, but not in a pompous, disrespectful way. Uh, but when it comes down to, you know, core issues, we have to put ourselves first. We have to make sure that we protect ourselves and that we have good boundaries and, and uh, you know, the problem that we face and the problem that you're gonna face is, is that when you begin to recover, uh, it's almost like it's, uh, it's like subliminal or something. The, the narcissist will, will, will start to come, wanna come back and you're gonna have to deal with that. And so when the narcissist comes back and tries to re-engage with you, um, you really wanna go no contact. I mean unless you have the gray rock because you have other issues with them, but literally just business with them, if that's the case. Um, you really need to be as much airtight as you can on no contact. But not only just no contact is gonna fix the situation, no contact will keep that individual from devaluing you and being in your life anymore, but they can still be in your head and they will for a time. And so the recovery is partially you um, reversing a lot of the, the curses. I call them curses because they are curses. They get you seduced and they get you uh, in this uh, fake world that they're in and they get you believe in certain things. And that's when they can pull you down. And so some of that is reverse engineering uh, those, those structures that they have set up in your life or tried to. You have to dismantle everything that the narcissist is, has tried to put in your life. They are nothing good for you. There's not, no fruit there. It's always evil. And they're always there to take you down, to just use you. When they call them, when they call you a target, that's exactly what you are. That's what you were. And you're still a target because the narcissist is coming back. And regardless if you think they are or you think they're not, they are. And Nevertheless, you always have to expect that they are because you have to be in to the level of um, having your guard on point. Because they have a way of, even if you've been away from them for six, seven years and, and you recover um, after having been felt shitty for six years, you, you begin to recover and, you know, it takes that long for some people because you've been with them for a decade. That's exactly when they're going to come back. Right when you're starting to feel good again, just to put you down. So first you're a target and then you get a mesh with them and then you become, they, they're, they're a parasite. And um, just beware uh, that you have to always be on point knowing that the narcissist is always going to return. And I don't want you to focus on that so much uh, as much as I'd like you to focus on yourself and to growing yourself into, into the best version of your your yourself to push yourself to be somebody who you never thought, things that you could never thought you could accomplish. Just know that, just know that you can accomplish them now. Because a lot of times when you wait to narcissism, you find that these individuals are not just 
there's never just one narcissist in your life. There's never been one narcissist in your life. And a lot of times when you had narcissists in your life before you woke up, these individuals were not even just that love partner. Um, these people were in your family. These people were your friends. These people were, uh, you're going to find that when you wake up to narcissism, that there's more than just one in your life. And uh, you really, you know, the healthiest thing you could do is to, to get, kick them all out of your life. And, and, and even if they're close family members to, uh, you know, get to a level of healthy independence and building good boundaries. Uh, if your boundaries are correct, meaning you love yourself uh, uh, the way that you should, these people will never get access into your life again, at least to the level that they have. You know, when I say at least to the level, because there's going to be probably some that maybe are family uh, and you may have to deal with them uh, maybe a, a couple of times a year. Um, but I guess when I say that you can be better than anything you've ever been in, in all your life or ever thought you could because these people have been pulling you down unbeknownst to you outside of your love relationship. They were all throughout your life. Um, and now that you know who they are and what they look like and, and you're building these boundaries, boundaries uh, are created for you to have a successful life. A life that you choose without people, individuals, stomping all over it and putting your light out. Putting your vision out, okay? Taking your joy away. Getting you to focus on them uh, more than yourself, you know? Uh... It's it's a it's sometimes it's a lot of times it's a it's a hard road and getting over a narcissist is a difficult thing. Um, it's not just a regular relationship, and but you have to give them no energy. You have to give them nothing, and just detach from them because they. A lot of times you have always been asking what you did wrong or what you could do or how are you doing or what could I do for you, you know? And this is how they get you uh, taught and addicted. And what you need in your life is reciprocation and you need uh, good, healthy love. You need... Uh, to be able to do things for the one that you love, yes. But not to the degree that it, it devastates you. You should never get devalued. You should never get into uh, an issue with somebody where you can't talk it out. If you truly love each other. You should never get in a, a, a place where you feel triangulated. You should never feel that some, you should never in a healthy relationship allow somebody to blame shift onto you. Um, you should have a connection, a chemistry with somebody that is healthy. And following your innermost gut you know, uh, is a big deal. That's your intuition, your, your discerning of the spirits around you and having empathy and being an, an empath is a beautiful thing. But you just have to know how to control your superpower. Um, you know, just like Superman had kryptonite, you know? Well, he respected the kryptonite and he stayed away from the kryptonite at all costs, right? And that's how you have to be with your 
empathy with your emotions, with your individuality. You have to respect the narcissist to a point to where you stay away from them at all costs. And that's one of your boundaries. I know the narcissist. I see the narcissist. I stay away from the narcissist at all costs. Okay. And you cannot allow people to know your vision because people that know your vision will be out to destroy your vision. You hold your vision close, you hold it tight. You walk in peace, and if you walk in peace, you won't react. You will respond. And you want to walk in truth, pure truth. And if you do things right, you'll walk in righteousness. And, you know, I am a Bible believer, so I believe that if you read the word, it will renew your mind. And if you read the word and you walk in peace, you won't react to the narcissist. You'll just respond. And if you speak truth, the truth will be a boundary against the narcissist because the narcissist hates the truth. So if you always speak the truth, then the narcissist will never be around you because you will continually damage them. You will injure them every time you speak. And if you walk in righteousness, it's hard for them to smear you. Okay. And that sword is the word. And if you read the word, it will renew your mind and it'll bring peace to you. And when you speak, that sword will speak because it's in you. And the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so that's my words for you today. I hope this out here helps somebody and, um, I hope you'll give me a like, a subscription, and a thumbs up. I love y'all. Stand tall. Soldier up. Peace out.